Before I start, uh, I just want to let you know I got one very important job from the, from the Filecoin team uh, for this presentation. You want to know what it is? Put some time back in the schedule. So I was asked to be brief, so I promise I'll be brief here with you today. So um, first of all, I do want to thank the, uh, the Filecoin team for uh, having me here today. Uh, I'm very excited to be here. And uh, I really appreciate this uh, great event and the opportunity to come, to come speak with you here today. Um, I'm going to share a, a little bit about myself, uh, not very long. Again, I said I would be brief. Um, because it shapes how I think about uh, Web3. And uh, it's, it's very interesting to me to think about it in the context of my experience with Web2. So, so that's me. Um, uh, I've been in the storage industry over 20 years, and uh, I've had the opportunity to lead a lot of different market verticals. I've seen a lot of uh, downturns, winters uh, in the storage industry, uh, and, and upswings as well. And you know, one of the most um, notable market verticals that I got to work on about 10 years ago was this emerging vertical, and we were all so excited about it, and it was called cloud. And uh, for me, it's, it's really interesting to think back on my time at the company then and, uh, and you know, how it compares to what's going on in the Web3 movement today. So um, just for a moment here, I'm going to ask you to get on the Wayback Machine with me, uh, provided by Internet Archive team. And we'll talk about 2012 versus 2022, uh, Web2 and Web3. OK. So the first thing about uh, web, web 2 versus Web 3 that I want to point out is, is something that was very similar. And that is, in the market, everybody was talking about in 2012, what is cloud? How will it transform businesses? And that's the same kind of conversations that are happening here today when people are talking about uh, Web 3. So uh, at Seagate, my, my experience back then was, hey, you know, we really need to learn about this architecture. We need to know what's going on out there. We need to figure out how we can innovate for this space and provide uh, devices, systems, and services. Huh? It's kind of the same thing we're doing today, but we're looking to do it at DStore. Um, but one, one key difference there is Seagate as a company is more focused on systems and services today uh, than we were back then, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in my pitch. Um, the last point on here is something that's very different, and it is the essence of uh, centralization versus decentralization, uh, and the difference in our experience in the storage industry between Web 2 and Web 3. And that is, back in 2012, when we were thinking about you know, how we needed to engage and what we needed to do, it was really about working in silos with individually with eight of the largest cloud server service providers in the world. Today, we're here because we see the value in collaborating with this community. Because uh, in this environment, this is where the magic's going to happen. And uh, we're really excited as a company to see where this goes. OK, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about data growth. Uh, and uh, what's, what's happening here. Many of you will probably recognize this chart. This chart shows the Filecoin uh, network storage power growing uh, you know, over the course of the last year and a half. So again, I'm going to do some comparisons here between Web 2 and Web 3. So Filecoin grew to approximately uh, 15 exabytes uh, in, in 13 months, basically by the end of 2021. Um, you know, now it's, now it's closer to 18, as you, you guys all saw in some of the earlier presentations. Um, so, so here's where it gets interesting. AWS plus Google Cloud plus Microsoft Azure collectively reached that same level of storage, approximately 15 exabytes, in 2012. Just 10 years ago, those companies collectively only had as much storage as Filecoin deployed in the first 13 months, basically by the end of 2021. Just amazing to think about. So and beyond that, you think about those three companies. Those three companies are three of the five most valuable companies in the world. And storage is at the base of the services that they provide. So you know, again, just 10 years ago, 
these companies had as much storage as Filecoin deployed you know, by, the, by the end of 2021. And if, if there's uh, Filecoin people in the room, um, not sure if you're out there, I just want to say, you know, um, 10 years from now, valuation, this is your benchmark. So uh, good luck, 10 more years, no pressure. Okay, a little more about the evolution of data storage, Web 2 to Web 3. Um, the picture in the upper left is actually one of the first servers ever developed by Google. It's actually in a museum in San Jose, California now. Uh, and you can see the cables and zip ties and duct tape and everything that went into that. And as we all know, you know, modern cloud data centers at scale are, uh, you know, highly, uh, highly developed. A uh, ton of innovation has gone into that. And, you know, they essentially disaggregated as part of that innovation the storage and the compute and the memory resources. So now let's look at Web3. You know, early hardware, you know, used for um, securing the blockchains uh, was similar to what we saw in the early days of Web2. You know, uh, no cables and duct tape and, but, you know, well, plenty of cables and duct tape. Uh, so um, it's, it's, you know, it's very similar. And the question then becomes, you know, what will it look like in the future? Uh, you know, just, you know, in, in the next 10 years. Um, and, and really, as I said, I th we think a lot of that innovation will come through, you know, some of the community, uh, like co communities like this one. Okay, so we already established, you know, just between those two comparisons, Web 2 to Web 3, Cloud, uh, Web 2 to, uh, to Web, Web 3, but I also want to point out this is nothing new. These trends and this innovation that is, is happening and this evolution is the same kind of thing that happened from mainframes to client server. And then it went from client server to mobile cloud. And now we're talking about the next generation, rise of the edge, Filecoin storage, distributed architecture. So this is, this is part of a, you know, an ongoing trend that we've seen in the storage industry. Uh, and you know, we're excited to see this, this next generation happen. Okay, this is, uh, I got a ton of mouse clicks in here, so you'll see me, you know, pointing and clicking a whole lot in this. But um, I, I just want to introduce this, this graphic that, you know, talks to, you know, the locality of storage and how we see the locality of storage changing over time. In the center is the core kind of, you know, hyperscale uh, data centers, uh, different size deployments of the edge, and, uh, and then endpoints. So all of those different localities have a certain amount of storage, uh, and I'm gonna demonstrate to you how that changes over time. But first, you know, here, here's Filecoin, you know, on, on the edge developing storage services for some of the new applications. And by the way, there are a ton of new applications that are better served by edge, edge type deployments. And I'll just show a few. Um, you know, we see uh, smart cities, um, we see uh, smart factories, we see autonomous vehicles, uh, and you know some some folks even talked about human genomics. So there's just a you know a ton of new applications that are really, as we see it, better served by storage deployment at the edge, and that's that's where Filecoin really hits one of the key key sweet spots. Okay, a little bit more about you know how the storage industry is is changing and uh, and data is being deployed. So, so this chart that you're looking at here shows, you know, a historical point of view in 2010 and an historical point in 2020 uh, compared to a projection for 2030. And what you can quickly see is, you know, endpoints like, uh, you know, consumer devices, PC phones, you know, back in 2010 was roughly 80%, 87% of where we saw storage being deployed. Core was 11, Edge was just 2% back then. By 2020, you can see that endpoint had dropped to 27% uh, and core hyperscale data centers had absolutely ballooned to about 54% of the storage that was being deployed. And edge it, you know, started to get uh, pretty interesting come 2020 at 19%. Now you look into the future, you know, our, our projections are that there will be you know, obviously continued shrinkage in the endpoints, Core will continue to grow somewhat, but the really big growth uh, um, as a percentage of the to total storage deployed that we see for the future is on the edge. 
and that's based on you know a growth rate that we're projecting at about 25 percent uh, Kager through through uh, through 2030. So um, here's another good chart, and this is very relevant for um, uh, for Filecoin as well. Um, any storage providers in the in the audience out there? So you know uh, this is this is a major trend that we see from an enterprise uh, data data storage perspective. The percentages that you see going up and to the right are the percentages of storage that we see being deployed as a service from one entity to another entity, rather than you know a, a, a particular entity for its own purposes. And what, what you can see, particularly during the pandemic uh, years, is that the percentage of enterprise class storage that um, was being provided as a service jumped from about 22% to about 40%. And we project that that will continue to grow to uh, roughly you know, 60% uh, you know, by, by 2030. So um, really important because that's, that's what you know, Filecoin storage providers are doing. They're providing a service to clients. And there's a lot of different reasons for this. You know, the most, most common one, of course, is you know, <coughs> you know, switching from CapEx to uh, OpEx models. Uh, but there's, there's a couple other reasons associated with that that are financial. Cost flexibility is one, you know, cash flow management, and uh, some technology reasons you know, in terms of you know, flexibility, scalability, and uh, you know, ease of deployment. I don't want to be coughing on stage here. Give me one sec. OK. OK, one last chart. Uh, this chart is an IDC chart, and there's, there's a lot to digest here. Um, I think someone referenced this before. But um, this, is, this is a view from IDC in terms of the amount of storage that is being utilized, um, you know, actually utilized in 2021 and projected through uh, 2026. Uh, and this is in terms of zettabytes. So we're, you know, we're talking about billions of terabytes here, billions of terabytes. And you know, this is you know, uh, those big cloud service providers that are the, some of the biggest companies in the world, you know, plus everybody else in the world are, are only at about seven or eight. But you know, we think that's going to continue to grow into the future. So, so just really you know, uh, uh, a huge market and continuing to grow. Uh, and a lot of that, a lot of that data is being stored by um, enterprise, you know, as enterprise class storage into the future. So, um, just just a huge, huge market that's uh, that's evolving here. Okay, this is my one commercial slide um, that I'll talk about Seagate. Um, most of you probably know Seagate as a device company. We do have a full portfolio of devices, um, and uh, we're we're very proud of that. Um, that will, that is, and that will always be the foundation of who we are as a company. Um, what some of you may not know is that Seagate has developed um, quite a, a, a strong portfolio of systems, uh, and you know, uh, high reliability, high density uh, systems that are able to take advantage of some, uh, uniquely take advantage of some of the key features that we have developed at the device level. And, uh, and then on top of that, we've started to develop some services. And there's two that I'll talk about. One is uh, live mobile uh, for uh, offline data transfer. So some of you are interested in getting you know, client data onboarded. And you know, it's uh, difficult to move data across the network. So um, very important. And we've also started to make some of our systems available via a lease agreement, again, embracing the OpEx option to uh, CapEx procurement. Uh, and uh, we're doing that currently in the US and in some countries in Europe. Uh, and we're looking to expand that over time. So this is kind of my conclusion here. Uh, I'm down to my last minute. I might just make it. Um, so we really see, as a company, a lot to get excited about. Again, this is storage is a massive market. Uh, some of the biggest companies in the world uh, have storage as, as their basis. Um, there's a lot of disruptive innovation that's already started, just like how it happened with Web2, except it, now it's happening in communities like this, rather than siloed with you know, individual companies. Uh, and 
as I indicated, there's two key trends happening. Uh, decentral architectures have started. Uh, trends to uh, as of service for enterprise resources have started. That's what Filecoin's doing. You know, placing storage on the edge as a service. So I say to all of you, let's ride. Let's ride to make this uh, ecosystem uh, more successful into the future and uh, you know, drive the valuation of the overall Web3 market. So that's really it for me. I just want to leave you with uh, one, one last slide uh, to introduce um, you know, uh, what's happening tomorrow. So we as a company have a side event tomorrow. Um, it, you know, if you want to learn more about our products, you want to uh, learn, talk about markets, you want to talk about op options to collaborate, uh, please come join us. Uh, we'll have a, a number of Seagate people there. And uh, if, if you can't make that in the morning tomorrow, uh, Ed Strong uh, is here with me from Seagate as well, and he and I will be presenting at some of the other side events. So thank you, uh, appreciate your time, and uh, hope to talk to you more over the next day and a half. Take care.